thank you, Jesus.
Now you're not holy. It's time for the heavenly Woo! kind to shine. Yes. And learn how to rhyme with the will of God in everything you do. So come to that place where you let me follow through and in increasing my anointing on each one of you by yielding more. For there's an open door. And the harvest is ready. And my eyes run to and fro looking for those who will stand in the gap. And then run the race. And let me pick up the pace and carry them into the vineyard. Yes. And cause them to work with my power. This is the hour for great demonstrations of my power. So don't be moved by yesterday. For today's a brand new day. Yes. Today's a day to come boldly to my throne and take grace and mercy for all those in need. For I'm ready to fix each and every one. So come to that place where you fully yield and we will have fun. And we will raise the dead. We will cast out devils. We'll heal all the sick. You'd establish those that seek me with their whole heart shall be established in full time walking in my power. This is the hour of the demonstrations of my goodness and my grace and the manifestations of the sons to come forth in strength. For it's my good pleasure to give unto my sons and my daughters the fullness of who I am, to stand strong in the midst of them, to walk and have my being in them, to simply yield and say yes. When Peter was young, he girded himself about, but when he was old, I girded him and I carried him and I caused great exploits to come through him. And I'm ready to do that with those that will yield, those that will just simply say yes. I will take it from there and I will bring it in to the all that I have for them. Will you be one? Then we'll have fun walking in my power with the ability to raise the dead, to cast out devils and heal the sick and not just talk about it but do it. Holy! So I get ready. Prepare your hearts to go steady walking in my power. This is the hour. For the greatest outpouring on earth is about to begin. Yes. Says the Spirit of Grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he wants to, hallelujah. He's like, come up hither so I can show you great baby mighty things you don't know of. He's ready to show you the things you haven't you haven't known of. Amen. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 How many know there's one accord? And suddenly, yes. there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And the Amplified says, a rushing tempest blast. Are you ready for the blast of the Lord to come? Yes. Are you ready to see all the enemies flat? All the demonic influence chased out of Phoenix. Yes. Yes. Cops are going to be bored. <laughs> Fly free zone. <laughs> no devils, no demons, no unclean spirits. Now let me just declare a 100 mile radius of me a demon free zone in Jesus' name. Yeah. Oh, like you far to come out of the We command all demonic <laughs> beings to leave this region within 100 miles of my 
radius of where my voice is speaking, standing right here, right now, in Jesus' name, loose and go. From every person, we render you bound to any disease maneuvering within 100 miles of my of me right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I thank you for it, Father. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for it, Father. We give you praise. And your word has spoken and said that you give us authority over all the power of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And that name is the name that is above every name. That at that name, every name that is named under heaven and earth shall bow. Yes. And we thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. So we just recognize that, that demon frees them. Yes. In Jesus' name. I oh, thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know everybody said? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You can believe that happened to you. Amen. I believe it happened. Amen. My daddy's big enough to live inside of me and he can clean out the whole planet. Amen. Amen. Come on. Hello. He's got to get man to get into agreement, though. In agreement. And man's about to come into agreement. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You know, the disciples came back rejoicing the name, that even the demons were subject to. Them. Even the what? They came back rejoicing, even the demons were subject to And he's like, don't rejoice now. Rejoicing your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. The demons. They're, I mean, they're under your feet. Amen. And if you're, if you're listening to them, you, you give them authority to That's be head right. high. Right. They're under your feet. That's right. uh, they're listening. My wife is like, I got, I got hit yesterday during the meeting. <laughs> oh. We got some traction going on here. They're affecting people in Minnesota. Hey, glory, <laughs> hallelujah. I'm stinking double stink or something. I wonder you bound over them right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Christ, I'm very yes. I thank you hard, Amen. Father. Amen. I mean, it's like, it's not about a thing. You just got to pay attention. When he sticks his head up, you got no? Back down there, boy. You can say, who do you think you are? I'm the son of God, aren't you? Think about it. Are you ready for the explosions of the goodness of God yes, to overtake yeah. you? Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, he wants to teach you how to talk. Okay. Now, you can think about eloquent speech <laughs> as talking, or you can learn about utilizing the anointing that's in you. Is speaking. I mean, you're born of a class of spiritual beings that created the heavens and the earth with a whisper. Why do you think it says, except you come as a child, you cannot enter the kingdom? Why is that? Each, I mean, it's like even if you're 60 years old, you can't come into you can't enter the kingdom unless you come as a child. Why? Because you got to learn how to walk and talk all over again. See, when you get born again, he wants to teach you how to talk. What is talking on Father's level of speaking? It's like having whatsoever you say when you open your mouth. Hebrews chapter 5, Is there not envy and strife amongst you? Are you not yet carnal and walk as babes? And have no learned to talk yet? See, he will never ask you to pray for something that isn't going to come to pass out of your mouth. He won't. Because he wants to teach you, he wants to get you sensitive to having everything you say when you open your mouth. As a normal way of living. I mean, what did Jesus model? I mean, Jesus prayed in travail. And then spoke 15, 20 minutes or however long John 17 was. It framed up all of us for eternity. Yeah. And, he sp and, and really what happened there was it was the Father in him speaking through him in full authority, framing up that. And with those words that, that framed up what he spoke in the garden, 
crown what? The glory that Jesus had, with, the word had with the Father before the world was that he left in heaven. And then as Jesus received it back right then, restored to me the glory that I have with you, Father, before the world was. What is the glory? The glory is the abilities of heaven. My Bible says Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Amen. So the glory to me is the ability of heaven. It's the ability of God. Paul said we go from glory to glory, one degree of glory to another. In other words, you're going to get stronger and stronger in learning how to walk in what Father already deposited in each one of us. Colossians says in chapter 2, And you are complete in Him, and whom, is, and whom is the head of all principalities and power? You are complete in Him. He didn't make you half ways. He made you complete. God who calls those things that are not as though they are, got full spiritual stature in every believer on planet Earth. And of course, Paul went and did what? 14 plus 3 years getting away, getting his mind renewed so his head could catch up and open the gate, lift up your heads, all your gates, so that everything that was on the inside could begin to flow. He came to the place where he said, I had to count all the teachings that I learned from Gamaliel and all this stuff and all that good stuff, the best, the kosher food and everything. I kept it a lot in the uttermost. He said, I had to count all of my own self-made self-righteousness by my outward manifestation of my body that I kept. I had to count that but don't. So that I could take on, put off the old tabernacle, put off the old man, and put on the new creation realities of who I am spiritually, and then learn how to walk in those abilities. Now I could just hang out in the flesh and not, not really go anywhere in my spiritual walk. Or I could just, Father, I said, <laughs> I could just yield. And to learn how to let the joy learn me my strength. Let him talk to me and tell me whatever I need to do. And forget about tomorrow. Because he's got me today. He's got me each moment of the day. And each moment of the day now is the Holy Ghost assignment. And even when I don't think I'm let, I'm let. Because I'm just in his plan. Yeah. And then he can take me, turn me whatever direction he wants me to go. And when it's time to go clean out a, clean out a funeral parlor or whatever... I'm used to doing whatever he says, and everything I do, the Lord, he comes and works. Because I'm sensitive to his presence. I mean, this is where the whole church is going. Amen. Everybody. Yeah. The mind of Christ is about to be activated in the fullness of, of who he's created us to be. Amen. And then Jesus came and modeled who we are. Amen. And religion, you know, sold everybody a lie, you're always going to sin. Well, if you want to control people, keep them in their flesh. Keep, keep them in a place of having no hope, having no confidence in who they are in God. Keep them in a place of having a sin consciousness of, of not doing good enough ever. Which is just a lie of the devil. Because my Bible says this is confidence that we have in him, but if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the condition we desire of him. First John. So there's a place of, of not walking on and Complacent satisfaction. Because complacent satisfaction will leave you in a place of knowing there's more, but never stepping into it. Psalms 82, God who stands in the congregation of the mighty, he judges amongst the gods. If you have a sin consciousness, you think you're judged for not being, not doing enough or, or taking and, uh, you know, what you did wrong. But if you have a righteous consciousness, you know your dad, your father's on your side. He loves you. And he's judged you perfect. The question is, can you agree with what he said about you? But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be a witness. Right. And what is the witness? The fact that Jesus was raised from the dead. And that he died for our sins. And to be a real witness is to have your conscience totally purged. To the point where your brain hooks into the power of God on the inside of us. Amen. And then we walk in that power with signs and wonders following. That's it. 
And we don't have to win people with enticing words of man's wisdom, but the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. And their face should stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And this is where we're at today. He's ready to take everybody that will yield into the fullness of who he's made us to be. Amen. And Jesus modeled it. He's your big brother. Hallelujah. I mean, his face was shining one day. And his clothes were white like raiment. Where was he? He was on the Mount of Transfiguration. And the sons of Boganers are the sons of Thunder. Peter, James, and John were hanging out with him. And they're like, they see him in the spirit. See, their eyes were opened. Mm. See, now, I don't believe the devil is just a visitation of, of how Jesus looked for a moment. I believe that's how he looked all the time, being clothed with the glory. From the time he got baptized in the Holy Ghost, the same baptism in the Holy Ghost that you got. See, I believe that his face shone. See, the demons know when you're shining. They know that when you're clothed with the glory, when you're clothed with the righteousness, when you're clothed with the goodness of God, they can't touch you. Amen. Because you're, you're in a demon-free zone. Amen. What's the demon-free zone? It's called the law of sin and death that can't come out from under because the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made us free from the law of sin and death. And the devil can't follow you into obedience into God. Come on. Yeah. Death cannot follow you. Fear cannot follow you. Nothing, none of that stuff can follow you into the will of God. It just keeps breaking off. Amen. Isaiah 58 verse 6 talks about, Is not this fast of chosen loose the bonds of wickedness that you break every enslaving yoke? See, as you just fast and pray and walk after the spirit and not after the flesh, all those yokes that tie you to the realm of the natural get broken. Amen. And you're, you're going to see a class, a spiritual class of being called sons of God come to the place where they're not no longer bond, bound by any elements. Anything in the realm of the natural. Isaiah 60, arise from the depression and prostration which circumstances have kept you. Rise to new life. For the glory of the Lord has risen. Old Testament, on you. New Testament, in you and on you. Hello. So, Arise from the oppression and prostration which circumstances have kept you. So spiritually, if you're being kept by, by what? By circumstances, you're spiritually depressed. That's true. If I'm being kept any, by anything in the realm of the natural, I'm spiritually depressed. Right. I'm not lit up with the glory. I'm not lit up with the abilities of heaven. I made my Father's image. You are too. And the church is coming out from underneath the curse. Amen. We're not coming. The, the children of Israel came out of Egypt. There wasn't one feeble one amongst them. How much more during the dispensation of the grace of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> See, you've been absolutely... You're a fortress of the power of God. You're a temple of the Holy Ghost. Nothing can hinder you. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can slow you down when you're in the will of God. Absolutely nothing. And all the only thing the enemy can do is try and discourage you. But if all you have to do is, hey, we're more than a conqueror. What do you say to those things that be against you? You can just stand up and roar. Holy! That's it. And speak the name of Jesus. Amen. What does the name of Jesus stand for? Safety, preservation, health, healing, wholeness. My Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We got such a watered down version of salvation. Oh my gosh, what's it mean? The Greek word is sozo or soter, it means to be made whole, spirit, soul, and body. On Father's level of wholeness, not man's. It's not about being whole in the realm of the natural. It's about being whole in the realm of the spirit, walking like Jesus walked when he was on earth. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Day in and day out. Being about the Father's business. Interceding. Living in a place of 
full spiritual stature. I mean, who wants some of that for the rest of your days? Like, like Jesus said, I'm going away. I'm going to go pull the glory down on the planet. And I'm not only going to send, the Holy Ghost isn't only going to come, but it's, he's going to, he's going to, the blood is going to be shed for the purging of your conscience from dead works so you can hook into the Holy Ghost in you, into the power of God. And you can walk like I've been walking. Jesus speaking. See, this is about to get exciting! No, 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 no. This is about to get really absolutely toasted exciting. It's like, my gosh. It's like, this is the, this is the most... You know, this is the time that the, the, the saints of old really desire to look into. I mean, it started with Jesus and 12. Holy! It started with Jesus and 12. But now we're coming to the place where there's going to be millions, the doors open for millions and billions of of full spiritual statures to receive the gift of wholeness and walk as Jesus walked and take over this planet. Yeah. And, full, I mean, and, and be in a place where, see, you know, people argue with me a little bit on this, but I don't believe in martyrs. And I'll tell you why. Because with every temptation, it makes a way of escape. And if you listen and obey, you're going to be okay. Amen. In the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, when you're buried, when you're all the way through the cross, which is the gate into the kingdom, the devil can't come through the cross. He can't come in there and get you. <laughs> when you're yielded. Now, if I perish for a lack of knowledge in there and I wasn't listening, and out there on my own. But see, and the reason I say that is because you have to know this. That you've been ordained after an indestructible and endless life. After the order of Melchizedek, the body of Christ. Jesus was a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, which is the endless and indestructible life. Now you can say, well, that's when you get to heaven. No, that's for now. Hello. So you got to pull down some of them things that, that think, well, God might do something bad to me. No, he's a good God. He, when you know his heart, you know his, you know, like someone told me that, I don't know why God allowed cancer. He didn't allow cancer. If he gives you authority to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, that means it's on me if I utilize that. And sometimes we can just kind of go sideways and, and end up in a crisis and we press in and then he's always there to fix us. Amen? Amen. But you've got to know that you know that you know God's will. Because anything that you get revelation knowledge on, I mean, what did... What did what did Jesus say to the disciples when he was like, hey, who do they say that I am? John, you know, like John the Baptist, raised from dead, or Elijah, or... But Jesus brought it back to the point. But who do you say that I am? And Peter, Peter pipes up and says, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus is like, empowered art thou, Simon Barjona, or blessed. For flesh and blood does not reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. So when Father, and then what did he say? Oh, and then the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Well, oh, actually he said, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But what was a rock? Now if you're in the natural, you think it was Peter. You know, some people have taught that. But the rock is a revelation of, of being revealed to you who Jesus is. Or any revelation of the word that you get revealed from the Father, the gates of hell will not prevail against that. Okay. It's like Peter and Gold, Peter and, and John walking into the temple, and this guy's been laying there, but he perceives that he has faith to be healed. And Peter says, "Silver and gold, I have enough, but such as I have, give I thee." In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And, and breathe, you know, touch him with his hand. And, he get leaping, went praising into the temple. So here this guy is fortified by sickness and disease. And Peter knows that greater is he that's in me. He's just been hanging out with Jesus. 
Everybody Jesus is praying for is getting healed. Basically. Hallelujah. And here's this little demonic mindset, demonic influence, influencing this crippled guy. And, and G, Peter walks in, in the name of Jesus Christ, and I was crying out the wall. And the power of God went and blew that demon right out of that guy and totally healed him. And the guy went leaping and praising into the temple. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. See, that name's above every demonic name. That name is actually above every name. Yes. And everything was created through that name. Amen. He is yeah. the Word. Yeah. So when God spoke, He said, Like me. Did you ever think He said, Like me, like me, like me? No, He didn't pray more than once. He didn't have to speak more than once. And you and I, when we're tuned in, we don't have to speak more than once either when we learn how to talk. Hello. You know, when people said pray over and over and over, stop. You're making it harder for that person to receive it the next time. Wait till you have an unction from the Holy One and, and, he's, and he's ready to have you speak to it. And he also knows whether they're ready to receive it. You know, when we get hit on things, but you want to come to a place where you are absolutely fully persuaded that before you say it, it's done. Yeah. And that you yeah. can tune, we can tune our hearts to that level of intimacy with the Father. And then and, and we can pray in the Holy Ghost so the faith that's in our heart comes up, illuminates our mind. And we know that without question, we have authority. We have those things, that, those petitions we desired of Him. And we can speak knowing we have it before we say it. See, this is about to be the norm in the church. Those that will humble themselves, Father, is going to take them into a place of knowing before you speak, you have whatsoever you say. People will become proficient at raising the dead. They'll know that, Father, he, you know, there's a place that, in, in John, it says, he that speaks the words of God gets the Spirit without measure. In other words, you get you get a heart blank and order, a heart blank and order, and you learn to the will and know the will of God, and He will turn up the anointing, and He will let you run with that anointing, heal the sick, and raise the dead, cast out devils wherever you go. Amen. Yes. Come on, yeah, unlimited anointing is about them. Yeah. You have actually, you have an unlimited anointing in you right now. That's right. It, 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 it happened when, when you got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And Jesus said, go away, go Gary in Jerusalem until you be a new power from on high. For John baptized with water, but you should be baptized with the Holy Ghost in not many days. And he shows up to 500 people after he dies. And gets resurrected. And in his resurrected form. He shows up to over 500 people. And 380 left before the visitation. 380 left without receiving the juice, the power of the Holy Ghost. They didn't wait long enough in their prayer closet. They were in a hurry. Try to get to work. I need that cup of coffee. No patience. Could you not tarry with me one hour? Jesus said. And Jesus was just coming to that place of, you know, see, Jesus lived in a place where, where, where he knew he was going to go and raise Lazarus from the dead. But you know, you notice he wept. But he didn't weep for the people. I don't believe. Oh, I, he had, oh, he, he been with that unbelief for a long time. You don't get it. Jesus, you've been here, my brother not died. Enemy trying to shoot at him and pull him into the natural, get him offended. Where have you laid him? Come and see. Roll away the stone. Lord, by this time he stinks. 
Did not I say that if thou shalt believe, thou shalt see the glory of God? Shall see the what? Oh, if you believe, oh, believing is a prerequisite of seeing the glory. Holy! Uh, he groaned within himself. Oh, Jesus spoke in tongues? Did the power hit him and he wept? You ever been in a place of, of the power hits you and you weep? Come on, that compassion comes. Mm -hmm. yes. And then he's like, Lazarus, come forth. Yeah. He could have whispered. Yeah. But what did he say? He said it in a loud voice, but what did he say? To look for their sake, I said it. Why? So that they can get it, that they got it too. And that they would get it. They'll, they'll go back and remember if Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. He just said, Lazarus, come forth. You know, did he think about the Apostle John? They couldn't kill him because he, you know, his testimony was perfect love cast out of fear. But think about where did he lay his head? On the heart of Jesus. But the chest of Jesus. Now, Jesus had a testimony of saying, Why are you stoning me? Don't you know my father and I are one? My father and I are one? Don't you know it's the father in me? For the father loves the son and shows him all things that he does so the son can go and do like the father. Go and do likewise. I will show you greater things than these that you may marvel. What did Jesus say? The son, I can do nothing of myself. Now, if you feel that you can do nothing of yourself, you're qualified. <laughs> Get that. Let us sink in. And we'll show you greater things than these that you may marvel. He wants you to have a marvelous time marveling in what he shows you. Have another drink. I thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. And another drink. Hallelujah. Jesus said, if any man does them, come to me and drink. And out of your innermost being flow rivers of living water or creative power filling each one of your words to release miracles. Did yes. you get that? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. So, Jesus. My father and I are one. So the Apostle John lay, has been, lays his head on the heart of the chest of Jesus. I'm the, his beloved. Mm -hmm. That was his testimony, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I, I'm, the, I'm the beloved one. Well, he's laying his head on the chest of Jesus with God the Father in him. So he's laying, laying his head on the heart of the Father. What do you do when you go to intercession? You go into the heart of the Father. Did you get loved on? Did you get due? Did you get assignments? And then he works through you. And you get to know his heart. You get to know his love and his compassion. And you know that he has nothing to do with any sickness other than zapping him with his power when he's got someone available to do it with. Will you be one of those? I mean, to really be pleasing to the Father is to come to the place that, that he can use me to do anything without me limiting his abilities to move. Because, you know what it's like to be a father and have your kids have problems and you have the ability to fix it, but no, have not a channel to do it through? Amen. Come on. See, Father wants to so move in the hearts of everybody and fix everything on planet Earth to the degree that why do you think Jesus taught everybody to pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Because it's the Father's will to have everybody living heaven on earth. That's where he's bringing this for the millennium reign. 
and we're going to have a revival so that an outpouring of a reformation uh, of planet earth setting up for the millennium reign and everybody's being invited right now holy and he wants us to pass out the invitations and get everybody healed I hope it's not my car <laughs> little distractions <laughs> Father we thank you now think about this you and I are called <coughs> to go into the highways and the byways fully endued with his power to bid the whole planet to come to him now I believe that there's an upwarding about to take place in Phoenix my father my father my father did my father my heavenly father <coughs> spoke to me in 19 says there's coming an outpouring in Phoenix greater than anything that's ever been seen in America I want you to be a part of it as sweet as I yeah <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh my gosh. And then he said, I want you to go finish what we started in 2009. Which I was doing meetings here, and there were some religious things that happened, and I got discouraged a little bit. And, uh, hi! <laughs> anyway, and so we came back in 19 or 20, and it was 19 and told me that. I came back in 20, and then told me it, and then we're back. January now. But it's time for the heavenly kind of shine. He's ready to stand up in full spiritual stature and everybody that will let him. That will let him. You don't need a job, you got a job. Do you know that in the kingdom it's the responsibility of the king to take care of the citizens of the kingdom? with every need that they have to be met. And with the blood of Jesus was shed on the cross of Calvary, and it's by his stripes, all of our needs are totally met, and we're of his kingdom. You know, you know, the Apostle Paul had a revelation that said that the whole creation travails in birth, waiting for the manifestation of the sons. Why is that? It says it's groaning and travailing and birth, waiting for the manifestation of the sons. Because the whole creation was subject to the curse when Adam and Eve fell. And the whole creation came under the curse. But it was created in the glory. It was clothed with the glory. And when Adam and Eve, who had given authority over it, stepped into obedience, into disobedience, didn't only take themselves under the curse, but they took the whole creation. And so, because God gave his kids, Adam and Eve, authority. So, Jesus, the second Adam, went to the cross to break the curse. Not only off you and me, but off the whole creation. And to do that, Father had to delegate the authority, get the authority back to man, in a way, because he's pure and holy, in a way that they could step into the fullness of his presence and walk in his power without any remembrance of shame or guilt or anything that happened from the curse. You and I grew up under that curse, knowing shame, knowing guilt, knowing fear, being bombarded by the enemy with thoughts, thinking that they're our own, but they're really the demons, machine gunning people, with thoughts, trying to say they're no good because we're made in the image of God. And the devil, because the devil hates God, 
Not that he had anything personal with you. But you're made in the image of God, so the devil hates you. So, so the devil, once Adam and Eve found the, the spiritual giftings got shut up, and they come to this place that the demons could throw thoughts at them or, or fiery darts, and people would think it's their own voices, and it was their own thoughts, and deceive many. It was just the devil talking. But man fell to a place where he had no spiritual discernment anymore. So Jesus goes to the comes, shows us, walks on earth, ministers, shows us who we are, teaches about walking in power, mm -hmm. says, now the power that I got, you're going to have too. Right. And I'm going to go to the cross so your sins are forgiven and even the remembrance of sins are totally erased so that you have no more remembrance of sin whatsoever. So that you can stand in the fullness of God's presence without any sense of inferiority. Because you're his kids. And he's your dad. And you're born of his seed. Of the incorruptible word. Hallelujah. So now you're born of God. And he wants intimate fellowship with us. Yes. And so Jesus went to the cross so that he get the authority back in the man. <clears throat> and that man could listen and hear and fellowship and intimacy with God. Now, now the intimate ones are about to learn how to walk in the authority and the power and the ability of heaven. To the degree, now this is where I believe revival is, or reformation. It's the reclothing of everybody and planet earth and the whole creation with the glory of God. Mm. Bringing the whole thing out from underneath the curse 100%. Mm. Are you getting this? Yes. So to me, revival or reformation or the outpouring in the Holy Ghost. See, the Bible says... In the end days, the knowledge of the glory will cover the earth. The former and the latter rain. I was taught that the former and the latter rain is the knowledge of the glory. Why? So everybody can operate in the glory. Everybody. The fivefold ministry, possible prosperous pastors and teachers, were given for the edification of the body to welcome into the unity of the faith. Unity of the full measure of his faith working in us. It's not about people agreeing in the natural. Father, you're, you're made in the image of God. You're a new creation of Christ Jesus. Hebrews 12, 3. And we ought not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought because God has given to each man or every man, really is born again, the measure of faith. And of course, Jesus said, have the faith of God. Speak to the mountain and it will obey. When they're teaching on this, then he said, did you know I gave you the same measure of faith I have? See, you're born of his image. You're, you're born in his likeness. In our image, make we them. Now, the new creation reality, when you got born again, you have all kinds of faith. And then people get religious, then they lose, and then they think they got to get it back. But you, your faith is the same measure. You're made in His image. You're His offspring. You're His kids. We come out of the loins of the one that Moses met up on the mountain, the man of fire. You come out of the, you literally came out of the loins of God the Father. You're His seed. You're His offspring. And then he breathed the breath of life back in you when the Holy Ghost came on you. And now we are called to speak life and see everybody clothed with the glory of God. And the whole creation is for belly and birth waiting for the manifestation of the sons because the whole creation itself is going to get delivered from corruption and brought into the glorious liberty of the sons. That's the real outpouring we're looking at. Yes. That's what we're about to see come to pass. And it's going to come through the intimate ones. 
Father's looking for voices. He's looking for oracles. He's looking for us to stand up in this place where we call things that are not as though they are. And he yes. takes and releases his, his, his word, his anointing through us to reclothe everything with the glory. Now, when you come to that place, the creation is going to chase you down because you represent the glory. And everything wants to come through your authority because it gets clothed with glory. So when you grew up in a place where it's hard to release your faith for finances because you're working by the sweat of the brow to get it and you're having to chase it the whole life. Now it's time to make a transition where, where you get so strong in the glory that it that everything that you have need of chases you. And that's why Jesus said, yeah. Seek ye my kingdom and my righteousness and all these things shall be added. Yes. Tell you why. Because when you stand in righteousness, when you stand in the fullness of who he's made you to be, you're going to stand in this place of, of things wanting to come through your anointing. Yeah. And you will have no lack. And then you just make the transition from fear to faith. And now, the faith I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Amen. So the whole creation is prevailing at birth, waiting yeah. for you to grow up. We're waiting for you to grow up, waiting for all of us to grow up and become... But in the Bible, there's a couple different words for sons. One is Tecna, one is the child of... The other one is Huia, the other one is Huios, which means to be the mature son. Jesus waxed strong in grace and favor of man and God. He waxed strong. And then he got filled with the Holy Ghost. He grew in wisdom. He humbled himself, came as a man. Born in a manger. And at a young age, he's like, Whiskey, not when I be about my father's business. Lived without sin. <clears throat> See, that's the difference between other religions. If there's no purging of the conscience, it's, it's no good religion. Because it's just you're trapped in your body. And in true Christianity, is not to be trapped in your body. It's to walk in His power. You know, then be totally free from the law, sin, and death. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, a new created being. Old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. If you don't let go of the old, you can't have the new. And so here we are, struggling because our minds haven't been fully renewed. And we haven't had the faith to let go of them jobs, those things, and then really grab on and hang on to the new. Yeah. Because we've had this fear-based mentality in our Christian walks. Because we haven't seen the fullness of, 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 of who God has made us to be Come on. stand up That's before it. us. But you're going to be about to see a whole bunch of people stand up in the fullness of who he made us to be. And then when someone gets born in and in, in, comes into your ministry, 